Hey, this is uh, Chris McElligot Park from Arkin Games. Um, this is my um, second video on the project that I was working on before getting pulled back into AI War 2. And um, oh, I'm being shoved. Rude. Right. So in the last video, I was showing off a bunch of different templates and different things that I was working on. Uh, with regard to characters and uh, a little, very little bit of motion capture that I've been doing and some other things. Um, this is using um, male arms from a first person perspective and um, the character's name for this was Richard. Um, I was thinking about having dual protagonists um, switching between the two of them. Um, this is showcasing some of the various art that I'd worked on, um, as well as um, some kind of preliminary level design that was leading into um, AI and everything, as well as a lot of sound design and uh, just world building. So I'm going to not talk terribly much for the first bit of this and just show you what's going on in here. I'm really proud of everything is uh, painted and everything. And I did a lot of work getting things to uh, come out a certain way in terms of uh, the colors and the technical art aspects of it. You can see this kind of dystopian, very broad cityscape out the window and everything. Um, all of the structural modeling is mine. At the same time, please do bear in mind, this is a prototype. And um, it's... Uh, not remotely complete. This is just where I happened to stop in late 2017. So, here we go. This is the red hook. It's a particularly, um, evil weapon. Um, I'll come back through and explain more things after I just kind of play around a little bit the first time. This particular version does have jumping. I later changed my mind and took that out because it felt a little bit too kinetic, a little bit too much like Doom 2016. Notice I put, like in Dead Space, the uh, um, clip count and uh, bullet count right on the gun. You get slow mo when it's uh, when it's in um, zoomed as well, which is pretty cool. Um, this is also fun. I gotta just show this. They're weightless. They float as if they're in space. Physics like you're on the International Space Station for some things. Not sure where the heavy pistol is. Should be right around here. Somebody knocked it. There it is. Notice the different fire rate and how... I painted these in Substance Painter. I did not model the weapons or the characters, but I did paint all of it, including the statue. This statue is meant to be very significant in the story. Note all the masks and everything. You can see the random buildings out there. This level is half complete, would be generous to say. Pretty pleased with the grass. Notice they change colors when you hit them. If you get a mask shot, then they go uh, insta-dead. Right? And one more, uh, maybe two more. Yep. 
one more and he would be dead. But I'm not going to do that because uh, most of these are just civilians. This AI that I was working on for them work just wandering around in a crowd and you'll notice they're kind of purgatory souls in a lot of ways with all different masks and um, most of them are just friendly just crowds of people <sighs> excuse me stepped on a vine that one I put kind of down on the grass so it always surprises me uh, I painted the gravestones and etched in the Mia weapon, Beloved Daughter, 1979 to win. May she find peace. And I think I did. I think I did a couple variations. Oh, yeah. There's this one that's our beloved daughter. So it's just like uh, all the graves are for their daughter was the idea. The antlers creep me out. So, not all of them are friendly. Deep from my trauma brain. <laughs> so, you'll notice that he split into parts, which I had pre-fractured and can knock around. And then the mask that he was wearing uh, falls to the ground. And a different way of killing them, they uh, hover in the air instead. I accidentally shot some other people, looks like, or they were already pre-damaged some. This is where the rest of the level would be, but I stopped. Because um, I was just focusing on this part. Um, they have a lot of cool moves, from back kicks to um, very punches. So when you die, that's what happens. Um, like I said, this is a study in sound design. She's after me still, but watch this. All right, so that turned her into a bunch of guts, basically. Now this is 5%. Uh, 5% of every shot, so land with that. That was a gore monster. If you were so brazen as to kill the uh, people in general with the red hook, this implement of evil, then you have to deal with the gore monster. Six bullets and one extra cope left. Usually there's about three that are evil. Must have been a different version of the game where the masks would hover in the air. The ones that are innocent that you kill, not with the red hook, make a really... Various disturbing sounds, often kind of gasping. Oh yeah, you can shoot the masks off of them and free them, the good ones. I forgot about that. So then they turn blue and they're friendly. Def I mean, assuming they weren't evil to begin with. Oh shit. There's no way I can uh, deal with that one. Hey, I got some more ammo? Did I? I don't know. 
had a lot of fun placing these props. I've said way too many bad words in this to make this a G-rated uh, YouTube video as is my normal, but it's just my natural reaction to it. I haven't... Come on, come on, come on. Oh, are you kidding me? There's four? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Most survival horror games have a limit on ammo, and this is my solution to this, is make it... Ah. Make it so that you have unlimited ammo per se, but that it's uh ooh, just chance based. No, 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 no. Why did I switch? Killed myself on the divine by accident. Ah, I'm never gonna get these guys. Let's restart and I'll show you some things. Right, okay. So I've restarted the game. And you'll notice that um, everybody who's walking around is different. The uh, way that they move and um, like whether they're an old man or a woman or man or woman in general, if they're evil or not, it's all random as to who's what. And so it's always this uncertainty. Um... It used to be I had this gravity inversion mechanic where you could uh, flip onto the ceiling and then walk back over here at certain points and stuff. But at the moment, there's no way to get back up here uh, except restarting this like temporary level. And I love like the different glass and everything that I've got here and the um, material reflections that are there. Um, this is not exactly like world's greatest architecture or something, but it was something that I had a lot of fun working on. Um, I also had it so that you can, you know, get up here on top of the, like, fallen angel type creature and hide from the gore monsters. And um, they have certain places that they spawn. Gore monsters don't come unless you use the red hook. The idea was that you'd be able to use the red hook on certain non-human animals, uh, or non-humans, kind of like those oily dogs that I showed in the other video. Um, and use it under certain other circumstances, and it's super powerful, but it's also evil. You know, you could use it to buy yourself some time. If with the last playthrough that I was doing there, if those two that were after me, if I just had no other choice, but there was somewhere I could get to that had ammo, I could kill them with the red hook, and then give myself, um, I think it's like five or ten seconds before that durn, durn, durn countdown starts coming back, and I have to deal with, uh, uh, the gore monsters, but at least I'd have ammo then. So I was thinking through less from a design standpoint, but more from an emotional standpoint. What would feel kind of upsetting, really? Uh, what would upset me? And it's, you know, as you can kind of tell from my involuntary swearing, um, I mean, I swear in general in life, but I try not to on YouTube. Uh, in fact, I've never sworn on YouTube, um, but, um, you can see some of them are just, like, in pain. So the idea is that basically you're in this, like, purgatory place, and it's really, really inspired a lot by, like, Silent Hill, um, but I wanted to take it, you know, beyond what that was able to do, and, um, Spent a lot of time working on getting, you know, the fog and the lighting and that sort of thing just right. And I was experimenting. Um, it was just kind of a basic setup with the columns and everything here. But I was really experimenting with uh, screen space uh, reflections, SSR here. And then also um, baked lighting, a variety of sources. And just how kind of... Kind of mix of brutalist architecture and kind of neo-noir... Uh, architecture and I wanted to see even with simple shapes used in some kind of weird off-kilter ways I wanted to see what I could do 
in terms of creating a mood and an atmosphere. And I succeeded in that. Um, this is not my greatest level design ever, but from a lighting design standpoint overall, and being able to blend the natural with the unnatural, by which I mean like the grass and the graves and so forth inside, um, like catwalks and stuff, um, that was uh, something I felt like was successful. And I'm real pleased with the way that the like creatures turned out. Um, you know, any one of these, even the ones on the ground, could jump at me. And they don't, so I feel happy. You know, and you can come up here and kind of escape from them. Um, I'll create a gore monster up here. <coughs> Sorry, lady. You know, she totally didn't deserve it, so she does this gasping and everything. And she's going to come back as something horrifying. I'm going to move up here. And so a female gore monster this time. Thankfully, they can't come on these pillars. Very disgusting noises. Very atypical for me to do... This wouldn't be a PG-rated video anyway. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Um, but yeah, I wanted these kind of invading vines and the mysterious kind of cloud-like atmosphere outside but it's like over bright and hard to see out but at the same time you see these other like buildings you're like where the heck am i it's very otherworldly you know the idea was for this to be very um um netherworldy let's see if i waste a clip if i do that Yep, sure do. So I took the more modern approach of uh, when you flip out a clip, it's like you're flipping out a clip in real life. Like you don't get to save the extra two bullets or whatever, that, or three bullets, I think, that were left in my clip there. They're just gone. When you toss a clip, it's gone. So I got five clips, each of which have nine bullets in this one. You know, some of them, you'll notice a real difference in the crowd this time. There's a lot more runners this time. That's just random chance that happens. Um, that right there is obviously um, very heavily inspired by um, uh, Alien, Aliens, James Cameron, and um, um, uh, Ridley Scott, you know. Uh, it's actually the set designer uh, whose name escapes me at the moment who made those sort of shapes. And I took a um, two-dimensional version of something that, um, people had made on Filter Forge, and then turn that into a three-dimensional um, uh, texture that could go on the end. I was just kind of experimenting with unsettling shapes, and you've got this really dark, weird material here that's just it's very wobbly when you move around past it to see the reflections. But um, all the reflection probes give us nice, you know, actual reflections to go with the screen space ones. And you can also see it was very difficult getting the lighting to blend in with the grass. Oh my god, that was hard. Because the grass is using this weird vertex shader. And um, you know, it's been like, what, three years now? So it's been a lot of improvements in the lighting engines and everything since then. But um, so a lot of the problems I was solving myself, if other people have solved now, and I could just use off the shelf if I was to return to this. But. Um, um, you know, I wanted to have a lot of straight, ah, damn it. It's just little extra bits that protrude into the grass, which I did on purpose. But, um, at any rate, um, uh, I wanted lots of straight lines and lots of little, like, Venetian blinds to have the, uh, light shafts come through and so forth, but I didn't want, um, I didn't want lots of squared off shapes. You'll notice that like, you know, even the edges are kind of rounded up and stuff here. And um, I liked the idea of an indoor grassy field. This is was never intended to be like a final product sort of a uh, environment. This is me just experimenting with some visual, a bunch of different visual motifs in a small space, let's say. Um, all the architecture in here I did in SketchUp. Um, 
and using a number of little architectural plugins to make like the blinds and so forth more easily. Um, yeah, that's right. Damn it. Got him. Right before he killed me. <clears throat> One bullet left in the clip, and I'll risk it. So then I love the idea that you can, if you're careful with your headshots. Ah. Nope. The ones that are red, you're at more risk of accidentally killing. But if you can shoot their mask off. Damn it. Damn it. And it's like, they make a really unpleasant noise. They're like, you yeah, shouldn't have done that. If you can get their mask. Look, she's carrying like an invisible weapon. Come on, dude. Let me save you. What's going on? It's um, so precise with the... Uh, <gasps> fuck. Yeah. It's so precise with the um, bullets on here that um, you can shoot between the eye holes. Now, that may not mean a lot to most people, but um, usually there's a ray cast out of the gun that is not all that precise and it's kind of thick and it just kind of generally hits an overall collision box um so like the mask itself would have kind of a invisible bounding box around it and it would hit that box and that would be a headshot it's so precise in this one that you can shoot between the eye holes of the mask and hit the head um which was another fun thing to uh work on it uses a hybrid sort of approach so oh she's got a all right she's got a red mask the red oh. give it her first die 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 okay she's good did another one just notice me i can't tell the one when there's lots of runners it's unsettling okay oh nope okay it's the ones with the red masks that you can save the ones with the black masks see i haven't played this in three years i was working on it and i was working on Fuck. the ones with the red masks that are like kind of that are you safe you're safe the ones that are that deep red metallic red those all right i got three bullets one clip left in the sky and of course I later removed the ability to jump because I felt like that was too much mobility for a survival horror game. And after having gone back to it, ah man, I uh, no longer think that's the right call. I feel like it should be what more what it is here. I'll show you a version with the. Jumping layer, so I don't see anybody with a red mask. No red mask, no red mask. I love this one here. You've got all the um, distortion from these normal maps on the windows, making for some really crazy uh, textures. Lighting is bloody complicated in this. That was, oops, the other part that this was a study in was trying to get lighting at all sensible. And you already saw me earlier when I was playing in the other one uh, free somebody but this was a fun material to work on where it's making it look copper and also inset and outset so um, and you can see uh, not only is there a normal map on this but some tessellation and so it uh, despite being a flat surface it looks like there's actually like organic gooey ribs kind of sticking out that was fun um, this area is always so claustrophobic because you can't get out. You can't shoot out through it either. Which makes it one of my favorite areas just because it's so claustrophobic. These um, weird angled blocks, which are just kind of monolithic here. Um, <laughs> the reason I put them in here the way that I did... Fuck. The exact number that are evil Whew. 
is always variant. Um, and I put in things like this so you could kind of sneak up around the side back when I was initially thinking this was going to be a game where you jump in. Damn it! Which I now think again is the case. So I wanted to test um, pathfinding and giving the player ways to get places that the... Ah! Shit! That the AIs couldn't always figure out how to do. And so you can watch how she pathfinds through things... Um, they also do a good job of, um, automatically avoiding each other. Um, and you'll notice how she's pretty darn quick to react. Um, and, uh, I really wanted to have a large number of agents on complicated terrain. Um, <clears throat> um, but without their, oops, without them having the ability to jump, and that's why I, uh, put in some of these weird obstacles that were just kind of, damn it, <laughs> some of these weird obstacles that um, I just kind of forgot about later. I was thinking at one point I was using IES, um, the architectural standard um, light cookies on this, but I guess not. Oh, that's right, I stopped doing that because it wasn't compatible with baked light maps at the time. Technology's come a long way in three years though, it's nice. Um, but at any rate, I, uh, ooh, she's got a red mask. Come, no, no, come back. Let me save you. Please don't let me kill you. This is one reason I added the, oh. Where'd she go? She's red and she's running. Maybe it's all the red ones have a red mask. It is. She's my mother. Yes. That's what it was. That, nope, not all the red ones. She's normal. Well, anyway, so this, like, basically the idea of being, like, a soul that I've saved or whatever from this kind of purgatory thing. Honestly, I was not, um, you know, in Silent Hill, there's this town that's sentient and evil and people get called there and depending on their, um, you know, what it is they've done, then, like, the town kind of takes on a reflection of their you know, quote unquote sins. It's not a religious game. Well, Silent Hill 2, not a religious game. The other ones are, have a bunch of stuff with weird cults and stuff that you have to fight, but I don't care for that part um, at all. But um, the idea of like, um, I like supernatural scary stuff. And the idea of this kind of uh, somewhat abstract purgatory where you can also interact with the real world. That's right. That's, these were the idea was these were like uh, kind of a manifestation in another plane or dimension or something of uh, um, actual. Can I get you? Actual humans, and so like for whatever's going on with her, she would be like a troubled spirit or something. You may, she's a runner, or she works for the military or something. You know, I don't know. Um, make your own inferences with that sort of thing, but um, something's eating her up. And if you can get the mask off and kind of relieve her, then ah, great amount of bullets. Then the idea is that um, they're better in the real world, and you've like you'll never really see the benefit of it, but you've helped somebody's life. Or if you do this, then that's just like a brain aneurysm or something. <laughs> And so I had this kind of, the beginnings of this mythology going, but it was all emotionally driven. This wasn't something I was logically putting together. It was just a matter of um, what scares me and um, what can I make that looks visually intimidating and that feels kinetic, but at the same time has scarcity of resources, particularly in... Um, in survival horror is a big theme you know you have a certain number of bullets you have a certain number of whatever health pack <laughs> nice i love that sort of kick yeah let me bring in the version that i more recently compiled that doesn't have jumping right so this is the more recent version um the uh, baked lighting looks inferior for sure you can tell how much brighter it is and it's just kind of weird i mean eh, whatever um, 
I was having some trouble with the shaders, I think. Hey, why can't I pick that up? Can I pick anything up? What's happening? Mm. Well, at any rate, this is a different version of things. It, uh, I wonder, interact A plus E, no, E, so F. Um, okay, that was the problem. Cool. I really love the getting to do, um, all my controls are all messed up, looks like. Set the def... Well, do I want to? W plus mouse zero. No. Mouse zero. Mouse one. F one, F two. Okay. How on earth did I set it to those things? Okay. Um, I really love, you know, things that just don't go. Like the... Um... um floating uh i made it you know so they push you you know normally in in a general game you run into an npc you push the npc this game they're just like made of metal and i wanted them to feel that way and they push you instead and um so many different masks most of them animal themed but not all of them and um there's only two models there's a male and there's a female and then there's a bunch of different masks and there's a bunch of different mocap uh things from mixamo and various other places it's sphinx free her i need to not shoot through the eye hole yes ah there we go see in this version i made it so that their masks also um float off rather than falling down because i felt like when it felt fell down then um you lose the impact of that. And you can walk into them, I think, or well, other people can walk into them and uh, it moves them around, but you can't shoot them to move them or anything like that. Um, the lighting in this one's so much worse. Oh well. Um, but it is interesting seeing the different um, lighting probes and everything. Much colder lighting, I'm not sure why. Um, No red hook, please. Uh oh. Yeah. And so for the evil ones, I made it so their mask would just hang in the air, not float. Um, yeah. This one doesn't have back faces. I would need to add that on. What am I to do items sort of thing. But I thought that was a nice touch. You can see some areas where I'd kind of evolved things in this. And I can't jump. Which means I can't go doing all those acrobatics and jumping up onto these corners and getting around. My mobility is severely limited by comparison to what it was before, which has some pros and cons. I mean, I don't hate it, but I also do prefer... Um, uh, somebody saw me. Yes! Save her. Get killed by him. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You really can see like the animal mask shapes like way more. <laughs> and so, you know, you see like the free floating ones like with the ones that you turned, that you saved. And then the, you know, so that part i like better in this i am not sure that i like better the the lack of jumping because i do miss it and i love seeing the ones that are blue walking around just happy Let's see can i get her <laughs> Fuck. uh she's on her like last legs and so in those particular cases it leaves a blue mask like this showing 
ah, this was somebody who was troubled and you could have saved him, but you didn't feel bad. You did a bad thing and you should feel bad. <laughs> ah, nope, missed. I love the little intake of breath that they have too. Like it's this relief they have. Oh, see, I keep trying to jump that temporarily pulls out that weapon at the moment, the red hook. Um, man, the lighting sucks in this compared to the other one. This is a good example of like a texture that's too repeating. Um, most of the others are great. And I had a lot of fun doing like the carpet. You can hear the difference in my sound footsteps and everything. I made it so they don't have any footsteps because I felt like that was more sinister. You can't see the masks better in this version of the lighting. Um, maybe I did that on purpose. Maybe this was not an accidental relighting of things, but instead a, hey, it's awfully dark. This is literally like a subway uh, texture type of uh, tile. I made it myself out of a couple of different... Um, other textures, I was pleased. And then this concrete is, I think, a substance painter uh, one and several different types of carpet and everything. And you really can see things better in this version. There is that. So you can really see how glistening and everything that is. And it's working with uh, alloy and um, substance painter and a couple other different um, solutions. You know, and I'm trapped up here at this point because I can't jump off the side. Um, so that's a different dynamic for sure. Okay. So that makes some of this even more intense. I also made these, um, much more reflective, uh, glass, clearly. I'm a big one for normal map distortions and glass. That's what gives it the illusion of having some smaller shapes in it. Like you would see with like internal crystalline structures in glass. Um, I knew there was another one. Damn it. She got me. When it goes slow mo, when it goes slow mo, all of the other sound effects um, slow down too, so it's pretty fun with the. And it's fairly obvious if you played Silent Hill that like some of the sireny aspects of this are definitely Silent Hill inspired. Um, but I think it kind of accomplished my own thing with it. Are you evil? Nope. How about you? You're evil, I bet. You're not? No, you're just being electrocuted. Sorry, dude. You're not uh, someone I can help either. Oh well. Um, it's kind of fun looking at This would have been like into a level further and then I'd hit a point where I was like, well, I'm never going to use this anyway, so why would I keep building the level? Um, and I really do love like the angle of the sunlight and how it just gives it's like perpetual dusk here in different parts if it are lit different ways. I don't know. I still think this lighting is inferior in other ways, in some pl places, it just shows off where I needed to have better texture work on some things, like whatever this is, needs work. Um, but like this, I painted by hand and, uh, um, and etched and everything, and it came out really well. Um, these ones. I wonder if there's any more evil ones around here. So, I mean, the idea was to, uh, I was going to, um, all of these animations with the gun and everything are stock animations. They're pretty decent. Um, but I was going to make some more personalized ones using motion capture of my own hand. And I had all this crazy stuff set up with a leap motion for, um, capturing distinct finger movements with the, some Breckle software. And that really wasn't working out. It wasn't precise enough for this level of closeness to it. I have a full motion capture suit, which does include fingers. Um, it's a Neutorm, uh, Neutorm uh, suit. 
Noitom, I, I can't remember that, how you say their name, but um, the fingers are not accurate enough for first person. It works great for um, third person stuff. And so I was kind of waiting for consumer grade uh, or, you know, low commercial grade um, motion capture suits to um, take some strides. It's been three years and it's been a lot of stuff. There was a particular motion capture shoot, suit that I was interested in that they were going to make some really high quality um, gloves to go with. And uh, I think that's out now, but I haven't uh, checked. <laughs> They move at all sorts of different speeds and everything, and they'll try to avoid each other, but these guys, um, their footprints are small enough uh, of where they're passing around each other that they don't mind being that close. And uh, there's a lot of work on trying to make them, at various points I had it, and they would get bunched up on the stairs and stuck because they couldn't get past each other when there was, I think there's like a hundred agents wandering around in here. And, uh, um, you know, obviously I'm able to, this is a pretty beefy computer for three years ago. Um, kind of middle of the road for now, RAM aside. And so, uh, as far as gaming PCs go, and I'm able to get like 90 FPS on this, which is fantastic. And that's before even using like occlusion culling or various other techniques for doing, um, I'm using LEDs, level of details, to uh, to help keep poly counts low, but I'm not doing any like um, truly fancy culling or anything like that. Not like what I do with AI War 2 or some of the other projects that I've put a lot more time into since then. So um, efficiency and seeing what I could push out of this was a big deal. And um, you know, PlayStation Pro and Xbox One X were just being announced right around this time and I was excited about the new um, capabilities on those that would really let me do this sort of thing that the original PlayStation 4 and Xbox One would not be able to do but now we're heading into where it's going to be PlayStation 5 soon and whatever the next Xbox is called it's supposed to be by the end of the year and um, you know, there's no question of me doing something like this on a Switch. I, I, I can't think of any way to make that work. But, um, you know, mid-range uh, gaming PCs of today and, um, you know, the upper range of consoles of last generation and the all of the consoles of next generation... Um, I'd be able to do this stuff and more. Um, so I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'll return to this. Maybe I won't. Um, I really, really enjoyed working on this. And um, there was a lot that I was able to accomplish visually and thematically and orally and uh, just working with mood and uh, um, combining some concepts of uh, weapons handling from different games and taking a new take on scarcity and survival horror um, where things feel scarce but you don't have definitely limited ammo that like 5% or 8% chance you can oh there's another evil one oh hello you goodbye goodbye shit um There she is. Can I get her? And just having fun with various particle effects and stuff too. Um, this sort of thing with the gun where it's like every so often it goes, every so often it doesn't. Um, really makes you uh, have to keep your reticle <laughs> <laughs> so painful sounding which is the idea like don't kill civilians like wanted to make people feel it like don't do the bad things let them do it but make them feel it hopefully that in everyone evokes 
an unpleasant sensation rather than something hideous. But well, that kind of brief. It's uh, interesting. Yeah, the the hovering mask was a good move. They need the back faces on though. I had culled the back faces. Um. You know, and different materials doing different things. No, oh, apparently that's not set up as glass. This is. Hmm. All right. Well, anyway, so um, this is kind of where my head was at three years ago. Um, certainly not where my head's at now. I mean. Freaking global pandemic now, um, but uh, I'm not in such a dark um, space anymore. I'm in a happy, loving marriage and happy with you know the kids are happy and in the main and um, you know makes me kind of wonder if I would want to inhabit such a dark space all the time um day in and day out working on something like this like i did for however many months it took me to work on this because so much of working on this the first time was all the technical proof of concept of things and i could use a lot of what i've done here to make a kind of uh let's call it a double a or hi-fi indie um style visuals um instead of uh certainly not triple a it's not you know uncharted for you know horizon zero dawn or whatever else but it's uh not your average indie thing either so um it's kind of a technical showpiece and just uh, more of an artistic showpiece than anything else um it makes me happy to be able to show this off um it has been just kind of sitting there on my computer. Um, I think on our third date, I showed my um, <laughs> my uh, new my wife Kara uh, this, and uh, she gets nauseous in first person watching first person games in general. She's no problem with Breath of the Wild or anything like that, or she's been playing a bunch of Fire Emblem Three Houses, but uh, um, first person she had to keep looking away from it and all that. I was like, check this out. This was what I was working on. It's disturbing, yeah, but, you know. And uh, as she described it, it was like my command center in the house I was renting at the time. And uh, that was still, you know, quite a while after I had let this go and been back working on AI War 2. Um... And there's a lot I love about working on AI War 2, but I was really, really getting to push the boundaries of my skills in a technical sense with code, um, with motion capture, both on the face, the hands, and the general body, um, with performance, with uh, all sorts of much more complicated the AI from moving around in spaces like this is just on a whole other level from the AI for doing pathfinding in a two-dimensional space. Um, same general principles, um, but it's vastly more complicated here. And um, I was really proud of what I was getting to work on and that it was evoking an emotional response in me that was really just very visceral. And um, the more I've been playing it tonight, it's been... 50 minutes now of making this video the less my response is i'm just kind of desensitized to it but when i first came back into it tonight and then when i f kind of was digging up the actual demo and playing it a bit four or five days ago i was intensely uncomfortable um i mean granted i was specifically pulling from some of my kind of worst nightmares and um things that would intentionally disturb me the most 
um, these broken pieces of these kind of metal people. Um, you know, and I was, I was doing all that on purpose to make it as uncomfortable as possible. And with some distance and stuff, it really, really was. That's for sure. And, um, it's part of me that really likes that. Um, I like being able to work with a small stage and just play with emotion and um, maybe make people think about something. You know, obviously there's not a whole lot to think about in this one because there's not a story embedded in here yet or anything else like that. But, uh, you know, the only humans that looked like humans were going to be you, you know, Ellie, the main character, and then her um, uh, ex-husband, well, whatever, dead husband, Richard. And um, I was thinking about having their daughter, um, Mia, at several different ages, um, appearing around kind of Inception-like, I suppose, but more disturbing. Um, and also, I think I was going to have Jim who is uh, the husband's, you know, the Ellie's father-in-law, basically, and he's going to be kind of a nice force. But, uh, and then everybody else, these kind of projections from the real world where you could <laughs> impact real people's lives, you know, give them an aneurysm or, you know, make them breathe easier, you know, literally shoot the weight of some sort of negative emotion like off of their body um, or they'd be collateral damage in your fight against other stuff and I wanted you to feel it and feel guilty or feel proud and um, and then make some interesting puzzles and other stuff in there and um, you know I don't know if I'll ever finish this or not it's a cool proof of concept it's fun to look at. Um, I actually enjoy running around in here and playing it and messing with the gore monsters and everything. And I think I prefer the version with the jumping, but... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I love it. Once you've freed one, um, you can't kill them anymore, which is great. It's like they've got this protection from even you, which is... That was on purpose and really cool. Oh yeah! I took this idea from Doom. You can use the red hook to actually get ammo out. That wasn't in the other version. Um, it's kind of like the chainsaw in Doom. I totally lifted that from Doom. And so... And so... Yeah! If you could, um do it well enough to survive the gore monsters then you can get more ammo that way I was really impressed with the 2016 version of Doom which is so kinetic going slow-mo uh, damn it I'm out of ammo where was that ammo floating? Over here. Oh, I didn't get it in time. Ah, she caught up to me. Uh-oh. Oh, I took away the run button, too. Well, that's no good. Alright, so, case in point of... <laughs> and you can hear it laugh, and then they immediately come back. that evil laugh, you get nothing from... Oh, she's safe. Alright. Ammo, 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 ammo. Come on now, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shit! Yeah, I made the blood and gore. 
float as well, because otherwise you just weren't seeing shit. They spawn at a couple of different random points. Where is that bullet? It's kind of a neat gameplay loop. Out of the curve of this. The inability to jump is a huge handicap. In a good way, I think. This really does elevate the game. Oh shit, there's three of them. fell. Maybe headshots don't actually do more to his face. That's a boy. Thank goodness. I don't remember how many shots these guys take. Probably more than I have. Oh, I have six more. Hey! I got behind the curve. I'm really not one for blood and gore normally, but I wanted to make it really unpleasant. Um, so I painted these really nasty. Uh, somebody else modeled these, but uh, I was like, "Yeah, oh, your paint sucks." So I, uh, I took the bones and the rib cages and all that sort of stuff, and uh, most everything I painted myself. Um, and uh, oh yeah, nice. You can shoot them. That was the other thing. That was the other nice thing, is that uh, they can literally get in your way. And they are just as, um, just as pixel precise of something for you to shoot as anything else, uh, as the, um, <laughs> smack that into the ground. Um, They're just as pixel precise as anything else. So with all this floating debris around, um, I found that really interesting that there's like the debris of your mistakes, essentially, is floating around here. And you can use probably innocent, who knows? Regular people anyway. They're not good, they're not evil. They're just humans. You can use them as a... Um, uh, ammo pinata, which is a definite moral, uh, you know, <laughs> that'd be a no, uh, unless you've got some really strong, compelling reason that's more than just your personal survival going on, which was what I intended to have set up of, like, I was even going to have it tracked by... Are you killing mainly, like, old people? People who, like, look, here's an old person. She looks, you know, girlish in figure. She's got a ponytail and everything, but you can see how she's walking and so forth. She's an old person. You know, or are you killing mainly people who are more military? Or, you know, every, by their movements, um, 
their masks really don't mean anything. They're completely randomized. But by their movements, you can tell, like, what walk of life are they from. And I was planning on doing uh, some more mocap myself on there, too. And it's going to have it, you know, come to a different ending, that sort of thing, depending on who are you willing to sacrifice? What, are you just going to kill all old people? Um, because they don't have much time left anyway. God, that has aged poorly, right? With the coronavirus now? Jeez. Um, but anyway, are you going to do something like that in order to, you know, make sure you have enough ammo to deal with your psychotic ex-husband and, um, save somebody, not your daughter, certainly, because she's already dead, but, um, and not yourself either. It's more a matter of uh, trying to correct a mistake. Um, and really the mistake was going to be something along the lines of, you know, letting your, you as the woman having kind of passively condoned some um, abusive behavior on the part of the ex-husband, not in a victim-blaming sort of way, but in a, um, in a personal sense. Um, let's just say that resonates with me. Um, and trying to, um, you can't go back in time, but kind of undoing the end result that happened to your child, but also um, um, the continual infliction of whatever it is he's causing to other people. And... Um, uh yeah I, I i i put it as a female lead because i felt like that was more relatable in general and like i said in the other video i tend to play female lead characters when i get a chance anyway if i'm given an option but um um i think it wouldn't resonate with many people if it was a male protagonist being chased around by his psychotic ex-wife that um at any rate um not that there's anybody psychotic in my life um but yeah so anyhow uh there's another pistol clip um yeah so it was kind of a technical showpiece of me experimenting with what I could do and what sort of frame rates I could get while doing it and thinking about what kind of hardware I could push that to and therefore what the audience would potentially be. And um, ultimately, I was looking to work with a publisher to uh, build out an actual full game. And I wanted to see um, uh, what sort of... Uh, you know, how hard was it going to be for me to kind of apply a lot of the pieces that are more complicated, like the AI pathfinding and so forth, to new and changing terrain and, uh, or, you know, new levels, essentially, so that if I started spending a lot of time just making new levels to be in and spend more time in, then uh, is that something where the AI would be falling over all the place and we have a aliens colonial marine situation on our hands that'd be a nightmare um and you know what i ultimately came up with was something hey more ammo uh what i ultimately came up with was something that um is very robust and auto maps itself much better than the nav mesh stuff um that unity has built in and so all of my technical questions were answered way in the affirmative and from a sound design standpoint and um, you know, pardon my thing but I, I mean i feel like i nailed that there's more that i could do and there's certain sounds that you hear too much and blah 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 but i mean prove a concept you know what i mean um i feel like that was headed there and um 
lighting wise you know i was trying a few different things i remember now the version when i went more light and i was like oh i missed the really dark bodies on them that was disturbing but i couldn't really see their faces and so i did this more light version and uh i still prefer the darker version it's more moody it feels more noir like this does not it feels washed out more in comparison it's colder it feels less spooky but you can see the freaking enemies better and their faces and their you know their masks you can see what's happening better so ultimately i'm sure where i would have wound up heading was somewhere in the middle ground and um if i was reapproaching this project today i would no longer use the alloy um lighting or anything like that i would uh move over to um unity's new high definition render pipeline which they've uh built into their engine now and which gives full shader graph functionality and a bunch of other stuff which i would have loved to had three years ago but um learning to do it the hard way and using other people's third-party tools um taught me a lot um which i then wound up using in ai war 2 as well and uh, you know i miss getting to work with more particle effects and a bunch of other things i mean there's a lot i wanted to do here this was the project i actually wanted to work on um which shouldn't be a secret to i well in terms of i had another project i wanted to work on that shouldn't be a secret to anybody who follows my blogs or forums or anything like that very closely but um i'm very proud of ai war 2 and what it's um what it accomplishes at a technical level is on a whole other level compared to this even um and that's been phenomenal uh to work with but um it's been a lot of years on that now and um uh, when it came to the art side of it, I was showing off so much of what I was doing with like the individual ships and everything. And um, especially like for the first expansion and, you know, hand crafting and painting those and showing off what I had done and making my own custom shaders for this and the other. And um, I love that work. It's so much fun. And, you know, you get the inevitable comments of people going, why are you bothering with all that anyway? You know, it's just, you know, stuff you don't even see unless you zoom in. And I'm just kind of like, I know. It bothers me too. You know, it looks really cool. It's such a cool game. And icons are good, but you wind up just looking at the icons, which is what AI War is all about. And that's fine. But I wanted to work on something that was pushing the edge more. Um, and I designed a bunch of characters, um, and I designed their, uh, suit and their little insignia, um, for a little starship people in, uh, AI War 2 as well. And then I didn't wind up using them in the game after all that. Um, it got voice actors and everything for them, including one guy off the BBC who, uh, did a great job as Alan Edwards. But, um, the voices are still used, but the characters themselves are not. But anyway, I have no idea what I will do after my obligations with AI War 2 are done. I'll probably do more AI War 2 stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it sure would be interesting to uh, revisit something along these lines and bring this beyond being just a prototype. And... Uh, I would be really excited to have some of the newer motion capture technology to where I can actually do motion capture with my freaking hands and do nice animations without me having to animate every finger and every joint for every frame uh, with weapons effects, which is what I wound up doing with some of them. Um, and uh, I love this red hook. Um, it took so long to... Uh, figure out what exactly I wanted it to look like and then to make it as well. And it just looks so evil. It just looks like, I mean, hitting somebody with this. Can you imagine? That's just, that's 
Blah. It's just like it looks horrific to me, which I love. Give the player this horrific evil weapon. I mean, a gun, whatever. But I mean, this thing is just cruel and unusual. So, um, yeah. Not sure if I really want to mess with uh, people psychologically like that or if I want to make educational games for kids. Those are really, really at the opposite end of the spectrum, aren't they? But uh, eventually, someday, um, I don't know if I'll tell this specific story with Ellie and the abusive husband and all the stuff with Supernatural, this, that, and the other or not. Um, I've only done one other horror game and, um, I think this one would be a lot better received, but, um, I don't know if I'll ever get back into doing horror or not, but it's something that resonates with me because you can start with emotion and build from there and then craft a story off of what feels unsettling. I feel like a lot of times when people are writing horror for games or movies in particular they start with some sort of premise all right this is going to be one where you're going off into the woods you're okay this is one where you're chased by a demon or okay this one's got a serial killer or whatever and then they work from the plot forwards and um it's a fine way to write stuff it's okay but uh i can guarantee you somebody like stephen king does not go from there his plots are freaking bananas you know, they make no sense. Half, I mean, they make sense. They're, but they're also they don't. It seems like he's got some sort of key idea, the central emotional resonant thing. You know, a crazed fan kidnaps a uh, a writer and is torturing him and so forth. Let's explore that. A car has come to life and is chasing you. A dog is evil and possessed and is chasing you. Let's see what happens with that. You go to a haunted hotel and it um, drives the dad insane and um, also some other stuff, a lot of other stuff in that particular one novel. Um, let's explore that. And you can just tell that he's got this central idea and he's just taking his time exploring it and all the emotions that go around it and um, all the possible things that could go right or could go wrong. And um, I really love that sort of process. And um, I don't feel like any genre other than horror really lends itself to that. Um, and I would say that a lot of Jordan um, Peele's stuff, I have no idea what his writing process is. I've read a lot of Stephen King and him talking about his writing process, but Jordan Peele with his stuff in the last few years um, in movies, surely, surely that's got to be along the lines of his process. And going back to like when it was Key and Peele, their show, you know, and how it was clearly like, a concept that they then explored in a variety of different ways. Oh, the telemarketer gets you to buy something, you know, by uh, hanging up on you instead of you hanging up on them and all this sort of stuff. And then they just explore that idea, you know, or what if it's the substitute teacher who's from the inner city, who's going to the, like, you know, white suburbs instead of the other way around and the, uh, you know, hilarious misunderstandings with that being backwards, you know, flip the, the trope. Um, it's clear that at least in their comedy, they're working off of in a Monty Python esque, um, Dave Chappelle esque sort of way, um, working off a concept and then exploring it and having fun with it. And in its own way, I mean, I think a lot of the horror that interests me the most, um, is that way as well. Um, Silent Hill has like six games in its series. I like one of them. <laughs> Silent Hill 2. The first one, it's very plot heavy. It's got this weird stuff with a cult. I don't care anything about all that. Silent Hill 2 is all about this one husband's regrets and his atonement. Not really atonement. His payment 
let's put it that way, for a thing he did. And it's, uh, you play as him and find out the awful truth about who you are as a character, um, the character that you're playing. And I love that. And I wanted to have some element of that in here too, where maybe Ellie's not perfect. Um, but, um, you know, but that she's still got something to offer. Um, so, you know, horror is not, you know, I've tended to be more sci-fi and the occasional fantasy and, you know, dabbling in, in horror. I wrote some horror novels, not full out, never finished any of those, but, uh, prior to moving into game development and, um, so that is my process and that is how I would approach this if I were to return to it. And I have no idea what the final game would be like, but um, part of working with the concept with a game like this, especially when you've got a prototype, is figuring out what feels right and reinforces the story you're telling. Not being able to jump, I think makes sense. The surrealness of the masks and the blood or not the blood but the guts and everything uh floating i think that makes sense uh -huh. you could see some of the one of the masks floated all the way up there um takes a while to get to rest um yeah i was having fun with the gravity bending there for a while but it felt like a bridge too far i'm and I was later thinking, well, I could do that in a different game or different versions of it, you know, different, some levels of this game or something. But it's kind of, but it's kind of like, how unfocused is this game going to be? Is this going to be like the game where I try and throw in like every idea I ever had? Probably not the best idea. Maybe stick with this emotionally heavy, uncomfortable core gameplay loop, throw in story that I build around it. And I'd say throw in in a casual kind of pejorative sounding way, but I don't mean it that way. But, you know, build in a, a story that makes it, that elevates it. <clears throat> and then um, layer in some game mechanics that are related and not divergent. So not gravity mechanics, but um, more to do with the crowds of people. Like, let's make them mean more. That sort of thing. Um, and that's what I was planning on exploring, but, uh, instead, uh, um, our initial versions of AI War 2 did not work out. And so I had to go back to work on that to make that project happen. And it's been three years now and, uh, I'm sure it'll be at least another year, if not more, before I even can hope to return to something like this and the nice thing about that is motion capture suits getting cheaper getting better the high definition render pipeline getting better getting more stable playstation 5 xbox whatever the new one's going to be called uh will be out you know so a lot of things in my favor easier market to break into versus having to be on a high-end pc or um the latest and greatest version of current gen hardware like playstation pro or something so anyway that's my long ramble now i'm censoring myself again from saying long ass like i would normally say in person if i was talking to you conversationally but uh you know Old habits die hard, <laughs> except when I'm being chased by stuff and dropping F-bombs. So, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look. And um, if Total Biscuit was still alive, which he was when I was making this, you can't adjust the field of view. Um, may he rest in peace, certainly. Um, but, uh huh. <laughs> thanks to him one of the first things I always build in with a game like this field of view slider
even on a console. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and um, hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing this uh, sneak. Well, it's not even a sneak peek. This look at a prototype that I was working on for a long time when I wasn't working on AO or two, but Keith was and Blue and um, Pablo and all the rest. And uh, um, this is what I stepped away from. <laughs>